Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting for the City of San Juan at 6 p.m. Uh, may we rise for invocation? Mr. Orjona, can you lead us, sir? Yes, sir. Would you please bow our heads? <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you for all the blessing you have bestowed upon us. As we gather here, we pray that this meeting is successful, is productive, and is blessed. Guide us, give us wisdom concerning all of the issues that we face on a daily basis. Lord, we give you the glory for what we accomplish, and as always, in your name we pray. Amen. Face the flag for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you. May be seated. With a presentation of proclamation declaring the month of May 2019 as Older Americans Month. Ms. Cavazos. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm going to go ahead and read the proclamation. Yes. Anybody here? Yes, we do have. I know I saw some faces here. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Whereas Amigos del Valle Inc. includes a growing number of older Americans who enrich our community through their diverse life experiences. And whereas Amigos del Valle Inc. is committed to strengthening our community by connecting with and supporting older adults, their families, and caregivers, and acknowledging their many valuable contributions to society. And whereas Amigos del Valle Incorporated recognizes the importance of bringing together all generations and engaging in activities that promote physical, mental, and emotional well-being for the benefit of all. And whereas Amigos del Valle Inc. can enhance the lives of older Americans in our community by promoting home and community-based services that support independent living, involving older adults in community events and other activities, and providing opportunities for older adults to work, volunteer, learn, lead, and mentor. Now, therefore, be resolved that I, Mario Garza, by the power vested in me as mayor of the city of San Juan, along with Mayor Pro Tem Pizia, Commissioner Jesse Ramirez, Commissioner Ernesto Neto Guajardo, and Commissioner Lenny Sanchez, hereby proclaim May 2019 to be Older, Older Americans Month. We urge every resident to take time during this month to recognize older adults and the people who serve them as central and valuable members of our community. Once again, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to, to sign this proclamation. Ahorita, right now, what we're going to do is I'll sign it, and then we can bring everyone up front and take a picture with the whole commission. Thank you so much. God bless you guys, and God bless your families. Stay thank right, you. Stay right here. Stay in this
We continue. Yeah. Okay, Mayor Commissioner, this is a great example of community involvement. I really don't want to call it uh, older Americans. I like to see it as uh, wiser Americans, or like we said in Spanish, sabiduría de la gente mayor, adulta. So again, congratulations and thank you all so much for your involvement in our community. The next may item, Mayor Commissioner. Uh, can the staff please stand up? I just want to recognize him. Uh, I'm, I'm the board member that represents Amigo del Valle, and this is part of the staff that works every day. Todos los días trabajan a llevarle a, especialmente a comidas a, a, a ancianos que no pueden venir a, al centro y hacen es lo que llamamos Meals on Wheels y pues muchas gracias por todo lo que hacen ustedes por estar seguro que esos uh, gente de grande edad pueden agarrar una comida por día y hay veces que hasta los fines de semana también salen a darles este, comidas cuando los especialmente que no tienen este, seres queridos que les pueden dar de comer este, muchas gracias y un fuerte aplauso para todos ustedes que hacen todo ese trabajo The next item, Mayor, Commissioners, and, and again, if I can break the uh, order that, sure. that is presented oh, here. Sure. Uh, not every day uh, the school district is recognized in, in what they accomplish in, in, a, uh, in, in, in the sports. So tonight we'd like to represent or, or present uh, to you all the uh, recognize the PSJ Lady Bears softball for the by district championship and the PSJ Bear baseball for the district championship. And that'll be Mr. Willingham. Good evening, Mayor, Commission. Good evening, sir. It's a pleasure to uh, stand here this evening to present and recognize these next uh, couple of groups of athletes. Um, if not all of them, most of them, the majority of them have been through our programs at one point or another, representing the city at the city level, and have gone on now to represent PSJ High School. And both of them had an outstanding uh, 2019 campaign. First, I'm going to start off with uh, our Lady Bears. PSJA Lady Bears softball program had an outstanding season in 2019. The Lady Bears won their second by district championship in school history. The other was in 2015. The Lady Bears had an overall record of 27 and 10 and a district uh, record of 12 and 2. The Lady Bears softball program will continue to move in the right direction and looks forward to bigger and better accomplishments in the near future. The Lady Bears are coached by head coach Eric Madera, assistant Alisa Garza, Romeo Luna, and Nelly Trevino. I'm gonna go ahead and call up uh, each one and we can just make our way right over here so everybody can see you guys. First freshman outfielder, Alexis Morin. Freshman infielder, Brianna Horta. Sophomore pitcher, Eli Aleman. Junior outfielder, Ale Martinez. Next we have freshman first baseman, Anali Rodriguez. Senior catcher, Madeline Lopez. Junior first baseman, Catherine Padilla. 
freshman infielder Caitlin Hoagland, junior first baseman Madeline Singletary, and now we're going to recognize those who uh, were honored to make the Yale District team for 36A. 36A honorable mention shortstop Vivica Villarreal. Thirty-six A honorable mention outfielder, freshman Jenna Wajardo. Thirty-six A second team all district outfielder, freshman Madison Lopez. Thirty-six A second team all district catcher, freshman Kayla Hernandez. 36A, second team, all, I'm sorry. I said Madison, right? <laughs> I lost here, okay. Okay, here we go. 36A, first team, all district pitcher, Elaine Madera. 36A, first team, all district third baseman, Roxana Garza. 36A, first team, all district, second base, Corey Cantu. 36A. And our 36A newcomer of the year, Ariela Sainz. 36A. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2019 by district champion, Lady Bear softball team. Let's give them a big round. so we can get a picture with that. Okay, next we're going to recognize our PSJ Bear baseball team. The Bear baseball team had another outstanding season this year. The Bears were the 36A district champions with an outstanding record of 12-2 and in district and 24-8-1 and overall. It was a disappointing, tough, tough loss uh, series against Laredo United in the by district championship in three games, losing two by one run. On the positive side, this team consisted of only four starting seniors and plenty of juniors and sophomores that were not expected to do as well as they did. The future of Bear Baseball will continue to be successful and we're looking forward to another great year next year.
Winning the district championship this year was not easy. Moving to this district with plenty of talented teams was going to be a tough task, but our kids rose to the occasion and were not going to be denied. McAllen High had won this district for the last three years in a row, and this year the Bears took over that title. This year we had a group of young talent that consisted of three freshmen, three sophomores, 12 juniors, and six seniors, and the experience they got will help them greatly in the years to come. In the last 10 years, the Bears have won eight district championships and were runner-up the other two years. The Bear baseball program will continue to move in the right direction, and we look forward to bigger and better accomplishments in the near future. The Bears are coached by head coach Marco Guajardo, first assistant coach Luis Perraza, varsity assistant Matt Benavides, pitching coach and JV dark coach Mikey Garcia, and JV light coach Rolando Navarro. I know some of the players are not here due to other engagements, but I'm going to go ahead and just call them out. And as, you, as I call you all, you can just uh, come forward. Number two, Juan Zambrano. Number three, Cesar Cantu. Number four, Omar Alcantara. Number five, Ariben Gutierrez. Number six, Justin Morales. Number seven, Elian Gonzalez. Number eight, Ricky Rodriguez. Number nine, Vigo Lopez. Number 11, Devin De Leon. Number 12, Marty Gamboa. Number 13, Marco Guajardo Jr. Here. Number 14, Roger Juarez. Number 15, Orlando Castillo. Number 18, Nevin Herrera. Number 19, Jacob Sanchez. Number 20, Noah Herrera. Number 21, Jason Garcia. Number 22, Santiago Palomin. Number 23, Trey Guajardo. Number 24, Diego Viescas. Number 25, Alex Piña. Number 33, Ezequiel Maruquin. Number 44, J.D. Vera. And number double zero, Pablo. The, ble the, the Bears were very well represented in the all district selections and I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, Call out their names, and if they're here, just step forward and let everybody know who you are. Honorable mention pitcher, Justin Morales. <laughs> Honorable mention outfield, Marco Guajardo and Cesar Cantu. <laughs> Honorable mention utility, Diego Viescas. <laughs> Honorable mention third baseman, Noah Herrera. Second team, all district, pitcher, Elian Gonzalez. Second team, first baseman, Jacob Sanchez. Second team, second baseman, Juan Zambrano. Second team, third baseman, Diego Viescas. First team, pitchers, Juan Zambrano.
Dean. <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year, Ariben Gutierrez. <laughs> Offensive Player of the Year, Devin De Leon. <laughs> and Coach of the Year for 36A was our coach, Marco Guajardo. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Maybe I can move over this way and we'll get a picture. Please, thank you. Next item on the agenda, we have a presentation of proclamation proclaiming recognition of a career dedicated to increasing the education opportunities of farm worker, children, and youth to Dr. Jose Simon Villa. Ms. Cavazos. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, this proclamation is in recognition of a career dedicated to increasing educational opportunities of farm worker children and youth to Dr. Jose Simon Villa. Whereas Dr. Jose Simon Villa is a proud son of farm workers who spend 50 years working in the fields to feed their family and proud native of San Juan. And whereas being the first in his family to obtain a college degree and wanting to give back the farm worker community the opportunity to reach the promise of the American dream and whereas Dr. Villa migrated 19 years with his family until he began to dedicate his studies and career to advocate for farm worker families when he settled in Oregon. And whereas his dissertation research in higher education administration focused on the education aspirations of migrant youth, as well as educational opportunities for migrant children. And whereas Dr. Villa worked for many years with Ohio State University as the following. Assistant Vi Vice Provost for the Office of Minority Affairs, Director of the College Assistant Migrant Program, and Program Coordinator for Hispanic Affairs. He also served as Program Consultant and State Director of Migrant Education with the Ohio De Department of Education. And whereas he has led East Coast Migrant Head Start Project, a nonprofit corporation that provides high quality and comprehensive Head Start services to farm worker families in 38 centers located from Florida to Pennsylvania as a chief executive officer. And whereas uh, East Coast Migrant Head Start Project is the largest migrant and seasonal Head Start services. It has delivered services to more than 10,000 children under his leadership. Therefore, be resolved that I, Mario Garza, by the power vested as mayor of the city of San Juan, along with Mayor Pro Tem Pete Garcia, 
Commissioner Jesus Jesse Ramirez, Commissioner Ernesto Neto Guajardo, and Commissioner Lenny Sanchez hereby issue May 2019 this proclamation to Dr. Jose Simon Villa. Thank you. Thank you. Is he here? Yes. Is anybody here? Or no? No, Mayor. <coughs> the next item. Uh, we have presentation of proclamation declaring May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week of May 12th through the 18th as the National Police Week. With that we have Chief Gonzalez here with us and some distinguished men in blue. Good evening, Commission. I apologize for a Good little bit under the weather. So, uh, this is our new officers here. I wanted to present. They've been with us. Uh, uh, some of them just going to start, and uh, some of them started, so two years uh, at the most. So to my very right is Officer Ruiz, uh, just came on board. Officer Sanchez, been here with the department. Uh, Officer uh, Sonia Chacon, Officer Chacon. Officer uh, Rojas, um, two brothers, and uh, obviously Officer uh, Travis, new officer, coming on board as well. So um, this is National Police Week. Uh, Throughout the, uh, throughout the nation, so uh, I would like to read the proclamation. Uh, whereas in uh, 1962, President John F. Kennedy signed a proclamation des designating May 15 as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which it falls as Police Week, and whereas the members of the San Juan Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the citizens of San Juan, and whereas it is important that all citizens understand the challenges, duties, and responsibilities of their police department and that the members of our police department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence or disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression or intimidation. And whereas the police department of San Juan has gone to be a modern and scientific law enforcement agency which unceasingly provides a vital public service, now therefore be resolved. Mayor? Yeah. Therefore be resolved that I, Mario Garza, by the power of me as mayor of the city of San Juan, along with Mayor Pro Tem P. Garcia, Commissioner Jesus Jesse Ramirez, Commissioner Ernesto Neto Guajardo, Commissioner Lenny Sanchez, hereby declare May 12 through 18, 2019 as National Police Week and May 15th as Peace Officer Memorial Day. According to City Council, formally recognize the 49th sworn members of San Juan Police Department for their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities and their dedication to the community. Further, the City Council of the City of San Juan wishes to honor all police officers who through their courageous deeds have lost their lives and have become disabled in this performance of duty. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Can we take a sure. picture? The next item, Mayor Commissioners, we have a presentation of scholarship awards by the San Juan Fire Department. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Good evening, sir. We got uh, four awards, scholarship awards for uh, some students from PSJ. 
the district, we decided to open it up to all the to all the schools. Uh, before we're just doing the bears, uh, have uh, <coughs> assistant chief from the volunteer division, uh, Rolando Casas, will be doing the presentation. We have uh, we were fortunate enough uh, this year to any up the the scholarships to four. We're normally doing two, and they're five hundred dollars each. So Mr. Casas will be doing the presentation. <coughs> Mayor, commissioners, chief, thank you. And once again, yes, thankfully with your all support and the, the uh, citizen support in supporting our fundraisers that we do have. Um, as most of you know, the San Juan Fire Department is made of a combination fire department, both paid and volunteers. So our volunteers uh, crew is a member of 20. Um, and this, the fun, one of the fundraisers that we've had on an annual basis is our uh, barbecue chicken uh, sales that we do. Um, we do the haunted house um, during Halloween um, and our raffle during that time as well. So with these fundraisers that we have, it's what's been able to support this, uh, uh, these scholarships. And again, like Chief said, thankfully this year we're able to jump that up to four when before we would only do two. So uh, myself, uh, Lieutenant Medina and Chief and a couple of other individuals were able to go to the schools and present these awards there at the school district or at their award assemblies. But we were able to have the kids show up here and do this in front of you all to show them how much their education means to all of us as a community. So I'll just go ahead and read the names. Daniel Ray Garcia. Jacob Joseph Pinsiski. Dana Posada and Itziana Martinez. Is that I will go to AMB. At this time, I'd like to uh, recognize um, Mayor of the City of Far, Mr. Dr. Ambrosio. Thank you, sir, for being here this evening with us. Thank you. Now we can go back to item A, official canvassing of returns, May 4, 2018, <coughs> city election for commissioner, place four and commissioner, place five. Ms. Cavazos. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Good evening. Um, the City of San Juan canvas results are the following for Commissioner Place Number Four. For Mr. Erasmo Eddie Garcia, 672. Leonardo Lenny Sanchez, 1,509. Absentee voting ballots cast, 20. Early voting ballots cast, 1,786. Election day ballots cast 649, with a total ballots cast of 2,465. For commissioner, place number five, Mr. Pete Garcia, 1,175. 
Mr. Fernando Castillo, 244. Marco Marquis Villegas, 1,024. Absentee voting ballots cast, 20. Early voting ballots cast, 1,796. Election day ballots cast, 649. Total ballots cast, 2,465. The next item is the uh, issue of certificate of election and the oath of was, office was, to the winning candidate. Me. Was that the canvassing of the vote or just the report? Was that the canvassing? We need to take a motion, motion to accept yeah. the canvass. Yeah. 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 Make a motion to accept the second. Second, second by Coach uh, Guajardo. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Now, this time we go with uh, item B, the issue of certificates of elections and official oath of office to the winning candidates. Ms. Cos. Mrs. Sanchez. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank the commission for allowing me to be here this afternoon. As you heard Chief Gonzalez say, this week our government's recognizing National Law Enforcement Week. This is the week that we recognize everybody that wears a uniform who protects our community and our society and allows us to enjoy the life that we enjoy. And they call it the thin blue line for a reason. Because the officers of uniform, the men that wear the badge, the men that run onto the calls, they represent a small fraction of the community that they protect. And that's why they call it the thin blue line. The reason I say that, the reason I bring it up, is because about 15 years ago, if anybody's heard reference to Western Hidalgo County, they call it the Wild West. Well, as you can imagine, 15 years ago, it was a lot worse than what it is today. And I was a young city attorney back then. And at the time, I don't think you were the commander yet, but you were in law enforcement at the city of Palmview. And we were in the conference room of the police department of the city of Palmview. And we were trying to go over paperwork when a call came over the dispatch radio that there was a fugitive running loose at the Martin Valley Ranch. And he was to be presumed, this was from, uh, I think it was a federal agency. And he was to be presumed armed and dangerous. The dispatcher was still talking when I remember Commissioner Sanchez was running out the door looking for his keys and making sure he had his gun. This is your commissioner. This is who you have representing the city of San Juan. And that's why it's my honor to administer this oath of office to you at this time. Are you ready? In the name and by the authority of the state of Texas. Aye. Aye. Leonardo Lenny Sanchez, Leonardo Lenny Sanchez, you solemnly swear, you solemnly swear, or affirm, or affirm, that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully execute the duties, execute the duties of the office, of the office of City of San Juan, of City of San Juan, Commissioner Place Four, Commissioner Place Four, of the State of Texas, of the State of Texas, and will to the best of my ability, and will to the best of my ability, preserve, preserve, protect, protect, and defend, and defend the Constitution, the Constitution, and laws, and laws of the United States, of the United States, and of this state, and of this state. So help me God. So help me God. First of all, I'd like to thank my family for uh, being here and supporting me 100%. Uh, there's some family members here. Uh, there's no mistake, some friends here that uh, are joining me today. But I'd also like to thank the citizens of San Juan that actually instilled their trust in me and make sure that I lead this, this uh, great city of San Juan, friendly city, uh, in the right direction. You know, I'm honored to be here. Uh, I'm humbled by the, uh, the presence of the city of San Juan that, that like I said, put all trust in me and, uh, and my, my job is to make sure that we uh, make the city work diligently and effectively for the best of, the, of our community. And thank, thank you, San Juan. Thank you.
at this time. Uh, okay. At this time, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, recess, uh, so that way we can spend 15, 20 minutes with uh, Commissioner uh, Sanchez and his family with some cake and, and good stuff over here to my left. <coughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and entertain a motion to uh, recess. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 We're in recess at what time? 6.43 p.m. We're back on at 7.03. Is there a motion to reconvene? So move. Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Go ahead, Mr. Hona. Mayor Commissioner, the second item is under presentation of the on departmental reports, planning and zoning department, parks and recreation departments, San Juan Memorial Library, and the Department of Sanitation. Every department director is ready available. Should you have any questions? Mas, uh, Mr. Guanacitrus, it uh, kind of got blooded today when it rained, so I know that they took care of it. They were trying to clean it up, so if we continue to get rain, I know that that drain is, is plugged up or... This is the one by Citrus, right? Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I know that a couple of weeks ago, and uh, David Salinas, uh, the utility director, and myself were talking about that. How is it that we can bring it back and maybe entertain the, uh, the idea of uh, bringing that, and I don't know what it is called, Mr. Salinas? Called the uh, rotor or something where they, they take it into the. Uh... Go ahead. It's a, it's a root cutter. It's a mechanical root cutter. root cutter, so we can put it in. Because one of the things that we found the last time we cleaned it, there's a lot of roots in that in that line. So as as people you know throw away debris improperly, it flies out. One of the things that we found the last time we cleaned it were a lot of plastic. Uh, those styrofoam cups from I'm not going to mention the store, but from convenience stores and uh, paper plates stuff like that that gets stuck up in the roots and then they start clogging the line. Uh, I know the Vactor truck was out there right now uh, trying to unclog it. They weren't, uh, they weren't very successful, but I have another truck coming in uh, tomorrow morning because uh, our truck is down. We're waiting on another quote to get it repaired. We can vacuum with it, but we can't jet. So uh, Edinburgh sent the truck, but they were having problems with it, so we couldn't use it. So uh, the city of uh, Westlaco is going to let us borrow a truck tomorrow so we can hit it again tomorrow and take a look at it. But some of the water is receding. It's just moving a little bit slower. So it should be empty uh, by tomorrow morning or later this evening because it is starting to flow. There, there's like a 40% chance of rain. Yeah, so tomorrow. So and, just, and, you know, stay on top of it because yeah. we don't want people saying, hey, we're already flooding. And it's and, just one street, but, you know, yeah. you know they yeah, kind of. One of the issues that we have there, there's a there's a section of it that's that's well over 600 feet. That's longer than the hose that that any of the vacuum trucks carry. So one thing that I was discussing with the uh, sanitation director, public works director, is putting it in his budget for next year to put a, another manhole in in between that the long length, so it makes it easier for us to be able to maintain that line. Because right now we can't reach from one side of uh, of the line to the other, so we can't completely jet out the line in one shot. So by installing a manhole halfway, we'll be able to jet it completely and, and be able to vacuum out all that debris and get it out of the way. Next thing, Mr. Why are we charging $50 to replace trash cans if they're broken? Why are you we know, charging $50? Yeah. You know, I feel that sometimes, you know, if it's them <coughs> doing the damage, I understand, but if it's our garbage trucks doing the damage or damaging the lids, uh, some of the the taxpayers are saying that they get, you know, charged a fifty dollar for okay. replacing it. I'll look into that, Commissioner, and make sure that uh, if it's something that maybe uh, <coughs> it was done by by our own people, the you know the uh, the, the the grapplers or the the vehicle itself, uh, we, we can we can take care of that. Can, can we look into that, Mr. Garza? Please, thank you. If I may, Mayor. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Salinas, I know I I received a call yesterday. No, mentiras, it was Sunday. And I forwarded it to Mr. Arjona regarding some, I guess it's waste that was oozing out of a manhole, remember? It, yes. Uh, it, it, apparently it, that truck, what, what, what's going on? It was on? sort of back up, uh, it was over at uh, East 15th, I think it was in that cul de sac. Yes. Uh, there was a sort of blockage. Um, apparently the call went out. Uh, we're still investigating right now because our staff is saying that they never got the call. Uh, but then I started hearing exactly what you said, that 
and somebody told him that the vehicle, that the truck was down. Right. Um, I wasn't made aware until Mr. Arjona called me at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and then I called the supervisor for that department, and he hadn't been notified as well. Uh, so right now we're trying to see where the ball was dropped on our side, because it was on our side. Um, the calls came through. Uh, the staff that was supposed to get that call um, hasn't been able to give us a proper response on what happened. So as soon as we find out, we did call the city of Edinburgh, and they were able to assist us, so we jetted down. We, we cleaned the line, so it's been, it's been taken care of. Uh, but nobody made a phone call to, to the proper people to get it going. Uh, so right now I have the supervisor uh, conducting the investigation, Mr. Murillo. Unfortunately, we did have a, a lightning strike or something last night at the lift station that's over by the fire department. So uh, it burnt out the entire panel out there. So we have a bypass. So he spent most of his day out there trying to get that taken care of. But as soon as I, I get that information, I'll, be, I'll pass it on to Mr. Arjona so he can pass it on to you guys. My main question was, Mr. Sal as far as the equipment that was needed, we don't have it? Or we do, but it's, it's broken. That's what I was saying. The vector truck that, I, that I'm borrowing from Wesco, uh, it, it, it broke down. We're waiting on, on one final quote to get it down because the last quote that we have is over, over $9,000 to get it fixed. Okay. And uh, we want to make sure that if we get it fixed, uh, that we're using original equipment for the machine because the gentleman that gave us the, last, the, the lowest quote is providing secondary parts. They're not using original equipment. The last time we did that, it, it, it broke like a day or two after the warranty period and they wouldn't warranty the items, so. Okay, thank you, okay. sir. Go ahead, sir. We're going back to the uh, citrus uh, situation. I know uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem uh, touched that issue. But, you know, I've experienced something uh, a couple years back, back in the city I was working at. And I know that we're gonna, you're gonna send somebody to break those, those, uh, those roots. Well, my experience, uh, obviously the, the pipe is broke. So a sufficient amount of water will actually, possibly at one point, will actually have that pipe collapse. So if those pipes are running in front of the homes and it collapse, we might be involved in some type of hazardous uh, area in that. So uh, is there a way that we can assess the damage? Because actually it's a damaged pipe. So uh, if we can actually look, to look at the damage to see if we can assess, maybe we can fix a problem because it will continue the problem. We're gonna invest money in, in, uh, in breaking trucks and so forth and the problem will still continue tomorrow. We're about a month away from uh, hurricane season, and those are the things that I was, I'm looking at at this point. It's been a year in June, and we still haven't fixed the problem, and we still have it. Well, the, the first thing, uh, Commissioner, you're correct. Uh, the first thing we need to do is, is, of course, clean out the roots, because I can't put a camera down the system with all the roots there. Uh, once we clean out the roots, then we'll, we'll send a camera down the line to less assess it. And one of the, one of the proposals we're looking at is uh, uh, CIPP, cure in place pipe, so we can slip line the line because it is right in front of properties. So the last thing we want to do is cause more more uh, issues for the, the property owners there. So this way we'll be able to slip the line once we identify where the area is at, where all this is coming. And basically it'll line the concrete line that's there right now, the RCP, with a either a felt type line that uh, with a resin turns into a hardened uh, fiberglass type line or a uh, um, polychlorinated or superchlorinated uh, high ethylene plastic that gets cured with UV. So once it's, in, it's in inserted into the line, it'll, it'll get expanded with, uh, with air and then it's cured with UV and becomes as hard as PVC pipe. So that's one of the options we're looking at so we don't have to tear up that street again. Okay. That's it also. Uh Chiefs, uh, are we already ready for emergency management when, uh, when hurricane season is around the corner? Uh, what are the plans and where are we preparing for uh, that issue that's coming up? Hopefully we don't get anything severe in the uh, summer. Commissioner, we had our first uh, emergency management meeting yesterday. It went well. It's just a matter of uh, organizing our resources, getting prepared. Uh, I will give you uh, uh, an, uh, another meeting or uh, I'll touch up with you all at, at the next meeting this month like that we can let you know exactly where we're at but right now the directors are pretty much evaluating what they have uh, sandbags uh, resources the, the equipment that we have so we can get prepared but uh, we're pretty much prepared as far as uh, you know the equipment that we have yes sir go ahead um, Mr. Hona, I know that uh, I have requested the, the minutes for the different boards that we have with us participating here in our, in our in our city 
and and for the most part I did I thank you because I did we did I did see that that we do have minutes with the exception of Parks and Rec so I, I was wondering are they not meeting Mr. Willingham or do we have an issue with the board members that are not attending or what's the status of that's the only one oh, okay yeah okay it's not, it's not because of lack of quorum or anything we're good Okay, thank you, sir. What we can do, Commissioner, also is say there's no meetings during that month. We can say no minutes yeah, just, or no yeah, minutes. Yeah, that would work. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> the only thing I have, Mr. Salinas, in reference to the issue on citrus, um, I know Commissioner Sanchez touched up on it since June 2018. We've been having this, uh, well, the issue has been there forever, you know, but um, I'd like to see maybe here within the next two weeks the status or what type of assessment you guys are working on because um, like he mentioned hurricane season's around the corner you know so my question to you from June 2018 all the way to now what has been done so that was the only thing we did jet it several times to clean it to get it to flow and, and uh, how many times was that uh, I think we jetted about four different times okay yeah all right yeah, if you can just give us a status. No problem. Yeah, I, I, and just inform the commission as no well. Problem. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for the directors? Go ahead, sir. Thank you. The next item under public hearings and ordinances, consider adoption of an ordinance in the first reading of the voluntary annexation of the proposed Hacienda San Fernando subdivision, being out of lot 7, block 9, lot 5, block 13, John Claus of subdivision of Porciones 71 and 72, as per the map recording volume 0, zero page 4, map records, Hidalgo County, Texas, located approximately 1,000 feet on Nebraska Avenue <coughs> along the south side of Moore Road. Uh, Mayor Commissioners, this is a first reading for a voluntary annexation. started this process March 6, 2019. Uh, this is a, uh, where is it? Uh, what we did was we submitted... Um, is located on Moore Road in, uh, between Nebraska and Stewart. Um, it's for a uh, residential subdivision. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, attached with this ordinance, we're gonna have the service agreement plan. Uh, we did the two public hearings. We also are doing the two uh, readings, the first reading and the second reading. Once this uh, annexation goes into place, we'll be sending out letters to the, the appraisal district, the elections office, TxDOT, uh, the Texas Gas Service, drainage district, so that they know that it's actually within the city limits uh, already. So this is just the first reading. Uh, after we have this, it'll be an official document and uh, it'll be uh, annexed to the city. Um, and it'll, it'll be zoned residential uh, because when you do a voluntary annexation, it's automatically zoned single family residence. Yeah. Any questions for Mr. Robert at this time? No, if not, is there a motion to approve? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next item for the public hearing and consider an ordinance in the first reading for a rezoning request from Expressway Corridor District EC to single family resident district of 15.932 acre tract of land out of Lot 3, Block 35, Alamo Land and Sugar Company subdivision located approximately a quarter of a mile west of Cesar Chavez Road along the south side of Sergeant Leonel Trevino Road, requested by Stefania Rio. <coughs> On this side, Mayor Commissioners, there's a gentleman that uh, came. I'm sorry. Uh, Actually, I yeah, spoke spoken gonna... to Mr. Robert in reference to this item on the agenda, and he's asking the commission to go ahead yeah. and take no action. No action. Right? Am I correct? They submitted a letter, yes, okay. to take no action on the item. Table. Uh, the letter says tabled, but I believe the attorney had. If you read the one, the problem is that table, if they don't have, if they don't have the information, it comes automatically back next week. Right. If you do no action, then you can bring it back whenever that additional information comes. Okay. So it's, okay. it's up to this council. Well, I, was, I, I was just going by what he submitted. That's all. Okay, no action. No action. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> no action. Yes, sir. No action. Next item under C, hold a public hearing and consider an ordinance in the first reading for a conditional use permit to open an event center and sell of alcoholic beverages for on-premise consumption at the proposed Magnolia Events Center located 205 West Nolana Avenue, suites 9 and 10. Legally described as lot one, San Juan Plaza subdivision is requested by Jose Santos. This is a condition to use a request for an event center, and it's for Magnolia Event Center. Uh, this is located on 
uh, North Raul Longoria and Olana Avenue. It's uh, on the south side of Delias Tamales. It's a new plaza that, that was built, so they're asking for a condition use permit for, for that on-premise. Uh, it's submitted by Jose Santos. Uh, they did submit the application. We also provided the advertisement that was in the newspaper and sent letters to the residents within the 200-foot radius. Uh, it's currently zoned general business C2. Uh, the requirements for the condition use permit will be to get the TABC license, the occupational permit, uh, there's also uh, parking requirements. That plaza has 124 parking spaces, which is plenty of a uh, parking area. Uh, they have to also comply with all city ordinances, uh, noise ordinance, security camera, and they also have to pay their annual license fee for uh, for alcohol and, and just meet all the ordinances uh, that the city has. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did also approve this as well. Okay. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and open this up at 7.18 p.m. 7, 18 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? For or against? Any questions for Mr. Robert, members of the commission? Is that like a little convenience store or? Uh, it's going to be uh, an event center. It's an event center. Yeah, so they're so kind it's of. Not, it's just going to be when they rent it, it's not like. Yeah, they're not going to be actually like a bar. It's going to be more of an event center where they'll do like quinceaneras and then uh, baby showers, things like that. I had a question. Once uh, they, they're, they're operable, do we go back and inspect? Uh, before they open, we... we, we occupational, fact. was it? How about after the fact? Uh, yeah, every year we actually have to go out and inspect the building. So they again. open and then a year later you go? We go again, yes. We send out letters to all the businesses and then we go and re-inspect as well. And fire, the fire department also inspects as well. Any other questions? Not, I'm going to go ahead and... No? We're good. I'm going to go ahead and close. We'll go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. On the proposal, he asking in his preparation for the days and hours of operations on Sundays through Saturday from 11 to 12. <clears throat> I believe Sundays can still be to 12, after 12. Yeah, it has to be at 12 noon. Okay, because he start. asked here uh, from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Sunday through Saturday. Yeah, that, so he wouldn't be allowed to. Okay. If the ABC found so out that sure, they were doing that, they could, sure clear they could take the license. Other questions? I'm going to go ahead and close this at 7.19 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next item of the discussion is possible election, an authorized and budget amendment for the repair of the wastewater treatment plan receiving will, and authorized city manager to execute all related documents and budget amendment. Mr. Salinas. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Evening. Uh, if you all may recall, back uh, back last year, around yeah. July, I, I brought this agenda item to commission. Uh, unfortunately, back then, the, the company that was supposed to do the job was not able to mobilize in time to do it, so at the end of the year, we had to close out that PO. So this is just basically, the money was put back in the coffers. We didn't account for it in this year's budget, so the budget amendment will pull that money back in there so we can get that, that work done at the wastewater plant. Um, I don't know if you all remember back in June during the same floods we had some issues. Uh, we did submit all that stuff to FEMA. So far we didn't get any funding from FEMA for to, to take care of that. So we're going to take care of it out of the out of the fund that had already been approved last year. So I'm just asking to reappropriate money this year to take care of that project. We'll move. Back at the all those say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item: discussion of possible election. I'm ratifying a cooperation agreement with Home Depot working on a project in conjunction with the Habitat for Humanity, Humanity on cleaning up a veteran's home in York along with some beautification for, to the home's yard located 113 West 9th Street. Last week, a week and a half ago, Mr. Roel Garza, Director of Sanitation, received a phone call, was contacted by Home Depot, uh, Assistant Store Director, Manager, Herman Ochoa, asking the assistance from the city if we could uh, lend them a roll-off container. Uh, they're doing some uh, some work on this uh, gentleman's home. Again, it's, it's in 113 West 9th Street. He's a veteran. He served the community well. He served the country well. I think it's almost, almost fair that uh, we give something back to the gentleman. And uh, the reason we're saying ratifying is because I'd allow Mr. Royal Garza to provide that the roll-off container. So I'm bringing it before the uh, before you all, the commission, uh, since they should have started some the work today. Uh, yes, sir. The uh, beautification project was held this morning. I went out there and spoke to Mr. Ochoa, and we saw the amount of debris and uh, uh, that was being uh, compiled, 
and there was no need for a roll-off container. So we had actually had our grappler, which we are in the southeast quadrant, uh, pick up the debris. Good. But uh, Mr. Gomez was very uh, uh, emotionally uh, gratified and, and thankful for all the help from Hope Depot and from Habitat for Humanity. It was a great project on behalf of Home Depot and Habitat for Humanity. So the next item on the contractions and resolution, consider approve and enter into interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of San Juan, Texas, and the county of Hidalgo Precinct 2 to, to construct a parking lot and city right away at the Hidalgo County Regional Linear Park. This is the, uh, the park over here by Bear Trail. What the county is proposing is, is to uh, get some, uh, construct nine parking spaces, one handicapped and the other one regular parking spaces. And the reason it's uh, right away is because it's closer to the, to the curb. Uh, you can uh, scroll down to the uh, to the screen, Mr. Cavazos, and we can see where, where they're actually proposing to build that parking uh, those parking spaces. It's not going to be a cost to the city at all. This is going to be all on the uh, county. So currently, at this point, they don't have any parking spaces. So whoever's uh, going over to do the walking or jogging or bicycling, they will need to park along the street or maybe across from the uh, where the PCA is at parking area but this way it will give them at least nine parking spaces so that uh, people can go in and park there you mentioned that it was one handicap one handicap yes it's the one on the very edge the first one okay. and again it's a no cost to the city oh. now is that is, is that is that enough for, I mean, for one handicap? Usually in, in different businesses and locations that I've seen, there are usually two or more, you know? I don't know. It, it depends on locations? the size of the parking lot, you know? But it, I guess if, if uh, additional parking space for handicap are needed, we can always request from the county to designate another. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Jonas, so consider approve and enter into interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of San Juan, Texas, and the county of Hidalgo Precinct 2 to jointly undertake certain reconstruction of roadway and drainage improvements to a portion of Cesar Chavez from Owasa Road to Sur Road. Again, the, the uh, county uh, Precinct 2, they're doing some construction work at the, uh, on Cesar Chavez from Owasa Road to Sur Road. Uh, it's, uh, it's about 10,500 linear feet. Um, and there's about maybe 7,700 feet that uh, lies within the jurisdiction of Hidalgo County. So they're proposing to do an overlay between, uh, like I said, between uh, Wasser Road to Sewer Road and no cost to the city. They'll take the, uh, and they'll do it on, on the, at their expense. Questions? Not? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. The next one is consider a resolution to approve a water line access agreement between the North Alamo Water Supply Corporation the city of San Juan and Calixto Hernandez Incorporated. Mr. Escobar. Mayor Commissioners, uh, this is basically uh, just a water line access agreement. It's basically saying that the city, if we need to use a fire hydrant, we're only going to use it for fire protection and we're not just going to be using it to, you know, just pump out water, you know, that we want to use, but it'll be for the fire protection. And then this is for the golden chick um, that's uh, constructed there. Any questions for Mr. Robert? Now, is there a motion to approve? Move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Next item, consider resolution. Issue an order and notice of San Juan runoff election. Ms. Cavazos. As per the election code, subchapter B, runoff election. A runoff election is required if no candidate for a particular office receives the votes necessary to be elected in an election requiring majority vote. Um, in this case, we're going to have a, re, uh, oh my God. a runoff election Sorry, um, on June 8th for, pl uh, for place number five. The candidates for the runoff are uh, Mayor Pro Tempi Garcia and Mr. Marco Marquis Villegas. Um, 
in your packet on page 158 and page 160, you have um, the order of the election, and the only difference is the date. It's the exact same dates, but it's the times. Uh, the one on page 158 has the first day and the last day with 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and the days in between from 8 to 5. The one on page 160 also has the first day and the last day as 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and the days in between from 8 to 6. It is up to the commission as to which one y'all want to go for. Is there any reason why they change from last time to this time? There is no reason as to why they change. Like I said, it's an option. And one of the reasons that we looked at to, at the time from 8 to 6 is because of the Memorial Day. If uh, it wouldn't be a holiday, we would have eight days instead of seven. So you get that additional hour kind of like to make up for that Memorial Day. And also because in the last election, in the last runoff election, as a matter of fact, uh, Commissioner Wajardo was for your place number two. It was eight to six, the days in between with seven to seven, the first and the last day. That was the May 20. That was for the May 15, 2017. That is when correct. That was with uh, Commissioner Wajardo and yes. Rubio Muniz. That is correct. And the hours for some. First day of early vote was seven to seven. In between was eight to six. That is correct. And the last day was seven to seven. Seven to seven. Right. With the exception of Saturday, Saturday was from eight to five. But all the other days during the week were from eight to six. That was a runoff. That was a runoff. That is the general election. I'm sorry. And the general election. Seven to seven. No, the general election uh, was at seven to seven. The day during the week. The, 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 yeah. the one year first time around. around. The first time around, I don't, I do not have the hours on me, but those are typically eight to five. Yes. Right. And keep in mind that the last time that we had the runoff election, it was a, it was an election that was conducted by the city of San Juan, not by the county. Am I correct? That is correct. So uh, uh, we were able to kind of, you know. Okay. Um, set, our, set our hours or whatever, but this time we have the county assisting with this election. Is that correct? No. Yes, that is I correct. Make a, uh, Mary, uh, you excuse me, but I want to make a motion that just to keep it the same way we kept it on the on the real election from Favorite 7 to time. 7, Monday, uh, it will be Tuesday, 7 to 7, last day will be 7 to 7, and the rest of the days from 8 to 5. Okay, I'd I, I, I like, before we okay. go into a vote, okay. I'd just like to state this on the record that when you ran back in 2017, the hours from eight to six, you gotta understand that you want, you need to give our community members their constitutional right to come out and vote. And if we give them that extra hour, you gotta understand that there's a lot of working class here in our city. So with that one hour, you give them the right to come in and cast their vote. I don't think they're gonna wanna come in during their lunchtime and come cast their vote. If we give them that same hour, just like we gave you that extra hour in May of 2017 election. I think that's fair. That's fair for our, for our citizens. I just yeah, like to state that on the record. And I just and, want to state on the record, Anna, who gave you the orders to put from five to from uh, eight to six? It wasn't an order, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Mayor Garza did ask me if I could ask the city if that would be a possibility, considering the fact that they're the ones that are running the, the election runoff and the election. Well, and on. that's oh, why the... Let, let me repeat what I said. What I said was find out what are the different options the county can give us. That's what I said. So I'm clearing that for the record. Do you have it in the record it's got written or it was just verbally? It was verbally, but like I said, he asked for the possibilities of having it from eight to five or from eight to six. And like I mentioned to you, Mayor Pro Temp, um, on our phone call as well, I was gonna give it to the commission as an option. That's why I put both. As an option. As an and option. you checked with the county, is that correct? And I checked with the county now, to make sure. Now, if the county came back and said, we're gonna have the election eight to five, in between, it, I respect that. But, but the county came back and gave you the option, you can either have it at eight to five or eight to six. That All I'm correct. saying is we just, I'm just asking this commission to give our citizens one additional hour to cast their vote. That's it. And it, and it can work for, for both sides. 
Doesn't matter. Well, we got, uh, actually, we'll compensate for the Memorial Day weekend because it's only five hours versus the eight hours. That's exactly so, uh, one of the reasons why I placed it because when uh, Commissioner Ojardo was in the runoff, it was in the exact same dates across Memorial weekend. So that's why it was placed as an option. And the only reason it was that mine was run by the city and this is run by the county. Yeah, the, the, so the, the city had a little bit more more room to play. Of course. The county didn't want to, the county <coughs> couldn't assist us with the election, so we had to basically take that under our own hands is basically what happened. But they gave us the option to run the election from 8 to 5 or 8 to yeah, 6. And this, and this, and this, one, this, you know, this, this did not become an option until I questioned it, because at first it was just one, one resolution. No, sir, there was two resolutions made on the uh, same day. No, well, it was done on the same day, but not until I questioned it. Whenever you called, there, there was no resolution at all. I hadn't made a resolution. Walked in and I questioned it. There was no resolution made? No, it was made. No, but neither one of them was so made. Only the, only the times, I, the only thing I did was ask a question to the county and I got the feedback from them. So I, see, I see why Mayor wants to and I see it also. So what's the reason why you want to keep it to five, Mr. Garcia, even my masking? That's the way we had the election election uh, eight to five but on his runoff in May 2017 we had it eight to six what's the difference you don't want to give our citizens one, one additional hour there's election that we have only had five early vote dates so this you know I don't think that's a good what's reason one hour hey what's let's give our what's citizens reason an opportunity to cast their vote in one hour that's it one additional hour eight you, to six and you would have those eight hours if you had Memorial Day weekend but you, when we don't, we try and compensate that hour. So I already got a reason, but you still haven't given me a good reason why we should keep it 8 to 5. You got to understand, because our, our citizens are the ones that elected us here. Yeah. So in respect, we got to give them that one hour. So we'll, okay. Go ahead. Well, my motion still says it's from second. Uh, keep on the 7 to 7, from 8 to 5. There. Second the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item item consider resolution number 2019-10, denying AEP Texas a incorporated application request for distribution of rate increase. Uh, AEP Texas request for approval of its base rates increases to be denied. The existing rates and charges to AEP Texas are found to be just and reasonable rates and for the city to adopt such existing rates and to continue to be observed and to be enforced as it has been. Uh, the staff and AEP recommends denial of the rate increase. We're, we're, we're recommending, and AEP is recommending, uh, denial of the rate increase from AEP. Any questions? As recommended by staff. All Second. those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item is pretty much the same. It's considered resolution 2019-11. In this case, is denying Texas gas service application request for distribution rate increase. Texas gas service requesting approval of its base rate increase. The existing rates and the charges to Texas gas service are found to be just and reasonable rates. And for the city of San Juan to adopt such existing rates and to continue to be observed and to be enforced as he has been, staff recommends denial of the rate increase as well. And motion to approve as recommended by staff. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we're going to consent agenda. We have a couple of items, uh, budget expenditure report on March 2019 and the corporate investment reports from March 2019. This time, is there anything that we need to modify or amend under consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second. second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item of the executive session, the Sohuan City Commission will convene an executive session in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Burdens, Texas Statutes, and Code Sanitated Government Code Chapter 551.071, consultation with attorney and Texas Government Code. Pursuant to Texas Gov Government Code 551.071, consultation with attorney, discussion and possible action regarding legal concerning longevity pay for non-civil service employees. Time, uh, we'll be going in executive session. Is there a motion approved? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. We're going to executive session at 7.37 p.m.
Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries at this time under executive session. Uh, we're going to take no action. Is that correct? All right. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 This meeting has been adjourned at 7.53 p.m. Thank you.